One of the perks of being a pro athlete is the money that comes with it. Of course, they all love the game, but let's be real. If LeBron was making $12.50 an hour, we'd only see him on weekends playing at the YMCA. From cars to mansions to tigers, oh my. Athletes spend their money on all sorts of things, and rightfully so. I mean, when you're Floyd Mayweather and you want a golf cart, you're not going to get a Florida retirement home trying a golf cart. You're going to get a Bentley golf cart so people know, hey, I'm not poor. But for every yin, there is a yang, whereas some athletes prefer a more modest lifestyle. Jordy Nelson of the Green Bay Packers once inked a $39 million extension deal and spent his offseason working 12-hour days on his family farm. AJ Francis is more of an NFL journeyman, never really settling into one place, and is more of a practice squad guy, but he drives for Uber. Okay, maybe he's living modestly because he has to, but Jordy loves it. But there is one man who may be the most modest living athlete of all time. Daniel Norris, who over his nine-year career as a pitcher in MLB, made upwards of $10 million, spent his entire career living in a van. Did he have to? No, he chose to. Or maybe the van life chose him. And not only was Daniel Norris living in a van, he only allowed himself $800 a month to live off of. Who does that? I mean, most of us do now with inflation, but this is 2011 we're talking about. In today's video, I'm gonna dive into the mind and career of Daniel Norris, the pitcher who lived in a van. Daniel Norris grew up in Johnson City, Tennessee, where his family owned a bicycle shop for 80 years. So, there you have it. He was born into a love for wheels and tradition. His obsession with a mellow lifestyle came when he was six years old and discovered surfing. How does a kid in the mountains of Tennessee discover surfing at six years old, you may ask? Well, Jack Johnson, of course. Norris bought a Jack Johnson album, watched a few of his movies, and decided he had to get to California to learn how to surf. He made his way out to California, met a surf family named the Malloys, which yes, is kind of the same way the Manson family started, but the Malloys were just surfing beach bumps, and that's what Norris wanted to be. Now, this is a baseball channel, and you may be wondering, when does baseball come in? In short, I don't know. There's more information about Daniel surfing while growing up than playing baseball, but he must have been good. Clemson recruited him right out of high school, but he bet on himself and decided to enter the draft. His self-belief paid off in the second round of the 2011 MLB draft when he was picked by the Toronto Blue Jays. Along with inking a contract with a major league team right out of high school came a cool $2 million signing bonus. And this is where a lot of athletes go on a frenzy and blow through every dime early on. Shaq had signed a $1 million endorsement deal in 1992 and was $60,000 in debt the next day. But Daniel Norris already had a plan for his money, buy a van. And not just any van, a 1978 Volkswagen Westphalia, a representation of a carefree, go-with-the-flow lifestyle, appropriately nicknamed Shaggy. Everything about these vans screams, hey man, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, man. Inside this little gem of a vehicle, Norris had created a mobile oasis. Think of it as a cozy, wood-paneled cabin on wheels. The interior was a masterpiece of retro chic, complete with a small kitchenette where Norris could whip up meals that are probably as wholesome as his approach to life. You know, the kind of meals that involve more quinoa and less takeout. I know for myself and most of you in 2024, living in a van seems like a kind of sensible idea. I mean, inflation isn't fun. But when someone has millions of dollars, why would they choose to live in a van? Is Daniel Norris a nonconformist just trying to stick it to the man? Actually, it's quite the contrary. Norris is a devout Christian, and his choice of living in a van keeps him humble. When he was asked by ESPN why he was living off $800 a month despite a $2 million signing bonus, his reply was nothing less than powerful. He said, who am I to deserve that? What have I really done? I'm actually more comfortable being kind of poor. 
Living in a van was Daniel's way of saying, I don't need all the bells and whistles to be happy. Sometimes all you need is a good view and a cozy place to crash. And in a world where everyone seems to be chasing the next big thing, Norris's van life was a refreshing reminder that sometimes the best way to enjoy life is to keep things simple and authentic. Now, when I think of someone living in a van, I assume they may have a screw or two loose, or four, or 12. And even for Daniel Norris, some people just don't get it, man. Right-handed pitcher Marcus Stroman once approached Norris while he was struggling to make coffee in his van. Stroman thought Daniel was crazy because the team had free coffee just a few feet away. It seemed like an easy solution to the problem. Why are you going to spill hot coffee all over Shaggy when you can just walk inside and get a cup for free? Tony LaCava, the Blue Jays' assistant general manager at the time, had Norris's back when people expressed concerns. Daniel was still showing up in great shape, in good health, and performing well on the mound. So, unless he was eating out of the dumpster and having conversations with street signs, Tony wasn't going to worry. And maybe it was that laid-back lifestyle that helped Daniel Norris have a solid career. While not Hall of Fame worthy, this guy was definitely no slouch. His 2012 minor league debut wasn't stellar, but hey, if it wasn't going to work out and he was going to get cut, he could just go back to his van. Over 13 games that year, Norris ended up with an 8.44 ERA, but struck out 43 of the 207 batters he faced. Daniel spent three years in the minors and brought his ERA down to 4.98 before getting the call up to the majors. But this time in Toronto wouldn't last long. After 10 games with the Blue Jays between 2014 and 2015, Norris was traded to the Tigers, where he would spend a majority of his career. This would be a good move as Norris, along with Shaggy, would find moments of zen during his time in Detroit. And again, Daniel Norris is never going to be a Hall of Famer, but he was a solid addition to the Tigers' rotation from 2015 through 2021. His best season was probably 2016, where Norris faced 302 batters, struck out 71, and ended with a 3.38 ERA and a 4-2 record. But he still left us with some great moments, like becoming the first Tigers pitcher to home run in his first career at bat in August of 2015. Unfortunately, Daniel left the game early with an oblique strain and ended up on the IL the very next day. Maybe it was a leftover injury from a gnarly wipeout over the summer. We may never know. It was also in 2015 where Norris announced he had cancer. Fortunately, 10 days later, because of the good vibe Shaggy provided or the successful surgery, Daniel Norris was cancer-free and ready to return to the mound and the ocean. While Daniel did perform well with the Tigers, it didn't last forever. In 2021, Norris was traded to the Brewers, and this would begin the journeyman phase of his career. I mean, honestly though, if you're going to spend a few years bouncing around from team to team with no real home, who better to do it than a guy who lives in a van? It's almost like it was meant to be. He joined the Brewers in July of 2021, then drove Shaggy to Wrigley Field for part of the 2022 season, he didn't park there for long as he went back to Detroit in July of 2022, where his parking spot was still open. He then signed with Cincinnati in February 2023, but was released one month later before joining the Cleveland Guardians organization. Listen, I've moved a lot myself, and one of the hardest parts of moving is never feeling quite at home. But Daniel Norris found a way to make every city feel like home, as long as he had Shaggy. To end the 2023 season, Daniel opted for free agency and hasn't seen a baseball field since. Actually, as of now, you should check out his Instagram. He's selling surfboards on there and looks like he's just enjoying life with his van and his new wife. It's a life most people who become pro athletes are desperately trying to avoid, to live in a van. But Daniel Norris is built different. He wanted to keep the temptations of the rich and famous away from his life so he can maintain inner peace and not lose sight of who he truly is. And it's sad. We see it all the time. Athletes come from nothing, gain everything, just to lose it all to poor financial choices. Or you see people from humble beginnings get successful and become arrogant and lying about what books they read. I'm LeBron James, and this is my third children's book, 
and I'm happy to share with you guys. Maybe we can all learn something from Daniel Norris to appreciate what we have and remain humble no matter what blessings or tragedies we face in life. You know who else has an interesting life? Paul Skeens. He hasn't lived in a van, but he has quickly become the hottest rookie in baseball this year. Want to know more? Click this video where I dive into the nitty gritty of what makes Paul Skeens so dominant at such a young age. And yes, there is a section on Livy Dunn, wink wink. So give this video a like, subscribe to Baseball Buzz, and go take a gander at what Paul Skeens gets to go home to.